It's Fish at Six. After a good day at the Star, I'm Mike Fisher, your trusty and trusted reporter. Five things, that's right, five things on the Fish Report menu for tonight. And let's get rolling. I appreciate you guys uh, sticking with us. Live, like live, whatever we want to call it. Uh, 6 p.m. every day or whenever we damn please, as we did earlier, a, a lunch hour video. And of course, 7.20 in the morning with breakfast at Fish and East and CowboysCountry.com. Thank you for bookmarking it and hanging out there. <laughs> Item one, rooted is the theme. Uh, and many of you, when I told you this uh, in, the, in the noon hour, what does that mean? Part of it is uh, a borrowed slogan from the former defensive coordinator. Dan Quinn was the first guy around here to say, be where your feet are. And that uh, concept was mentioned by Mike McCarthy, but he also kind of harkened back to advice that he'd gotten from his father. He, he uh, And between, between his dad, who of course was a cop, a fireman, and a bar owner back in Pittsburgh, and uh, Coach Marty Schottenheimer, that really is, uh, those two sources are where Mike McCarthy kind of has his foundation uh, built upon. And he has said before that his dad will tell him, if, if you feel like life's whizzing by you too fast, you're trying to do too much. Slow down. And it's kind of be, just being appreciative of, of the moment and appreciative of where you're at. Listen, uh, you, you think about little Mike McCarthy. And I know we take it all for granted now. They're all cartoon characters on TV. But, you know, Mike McCarthy, son of a cop, fireman, bar owner, uh, gets to grow up and do this for a living, make this kind of money for a living, ha have this sort of uh, status and level of attention and level of achievement and a super, that's, that's quite something, right? W once you just think of him as a man, quite something. So rooted. Now I've got five years, and he said today that, that his dad also has told him, look at your life in five-year increments. Where, where you want to be in the next five years? What have you accomplished in five years? Well, this is year five for McCarthy, of course, in Dallas. Last time around, when he had a year five, it was in Green Bay, and he won the Super Bowl. So, roots, rooted. We've, we've built something here. That's his point. We've put roots in the ground here uh, as, as a football team, as a Mike McCarthy-led football team. So, we are rooted here. Now let's grow from there. Makes perfect sense to me. And it's English, unlike Carpe Omnia. <laughs> Item two, Michael Irvin uh, thinks something and knows something. What he thinks is the Cowboys should not be messing around with the idea of a short-term Dak Prescott contract. Mike, Michael's saying five or six years. He's your guy. Cowboy for life. You're making a mistake not to do it that way. And of course, Irvin has lived this uh, in his own contractual wrestling matches with Jerry Jones back in the day. There's a second aspect, though, to what Irvin has said. Friend of the show, Michael Irvin. Dak will never leave. And, of course, some fish heads in Cowboy Nation are going, why? Please, hurry, go. He's of the opinion that that you're going to have, you're going to be hard-pressed to find a replacement for Dak Prescott so that's better than Dak Prescott. You know, it's funny uh, the, the, the guys, the players that you respect the most from the Super Bowl era, Aikman, Irvin, they all have wildly positive things to say about Dak Prescott in every way. I don't know. Uh, maybe we should heed their advice. In the case of Irvin, he's saying they're, they're doing this dance. It's an uncomfortable dance. In the end, he's not going anywhere. The Joneses won't let him leave. He doesn't want to leave. Uh, he's going to be the Cowboys quarterback for a long, long time. And Irvin says this, he's on FS1, with enough authority and passion. You know, the passion's always there, and he could do it as a fan and be passionate. But this seemed, uh, this seemed like he was talking with authority, as if he knows something, which we're going to get to in item five. Item three, the Green Bay thing. And Jerry needs to drop this. Mike McCarthy uh, was asked today about you know, how much you how much do you use the past to 
to teach for the future. And of course, it's a tried and true. We're gonna, we're gonna go back and look at film of last year. What did we do wrong? How do we do it this year? How do we do it better now? Let's learn from our mistakes. Uh, those who do not study history are bound to repeat it, something like that, right? But not specifically Green Bay. There's no reason to dwell anymore for them on Green Bay. It is a black cloud. It is a dark mark. Jerry will talk about, if you ask him, why are you in this predicament, lame duck Dallas? And he'll say, uh, Mr. Matt, the Green Bay thing. Jerry, you need to drop it. You, 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 you keep bringing up, uh, the ex-wife and you're doing it at your new wedding. That's a mistake. That's not learning from the past. That's not respecting history. Uh, that's not trying to build on what you did wrong. That's, um, that's allowing yourself to mope around about it. You're moping about it by continually bring up the Green Bay thing. Stop it. I just invented this in my head just now, unless you Google it and find out that somebody said it before. You mope, you cope, and you hope. I know it's not the seven stages of grieving, but it's pretty good off the top of my head. You mope, then you cope, then you hope. Right? You get to wallow in self-pity for a minute. Then you cope. You figure out how to get on your feet. Now I'm on my feet and I'm running and I'm hopeful I can make the race. Gosh, dang it. <laughs> That's a good one. You mope, you cope, and you hope. <laughs> Item four. Michael Parsons. This is Michael Parsons Media Day here at the Star. And um, he's the lion. But now he wants to be something else, kind of. Uh, I, I do think that one of the things that we're going to measure as we watch the Cowboys and Michael Parsons this year is a, a level of maturity that is almost inevitable. It happens for almost all of us. Now, he still did his Monday podcast in which he predicted all the division winners and did all kinds of stuff. But I, uh, in glancing through it, I didn't find it to be particularly incendiary. Um, and this one, I don't find to be particularly outrageous. It's year four for me, he says. It's time for me to be an assassin. That's not bragging. Uh, it's true. And it's also true that he already is that. We did the numbers the other day with all respect to Miles Garrett, who won Defensive Player of the Year last year. Micah's numbers were better. One good way for Micah to get a leg up on him this year, Sunday afternoon at Cleveland Brown Stadium, which is now named Cleveland Browns Huntington Bank Stadium. I, I respect it. They, they got somebody to pay for it. I respect that. That's what we're gonna call it. Maybe they'll call it the hunt. Maybe they'll call it the bank, but it's Cleveland Browns Hunting, Huntington Bank Statement Stadium. Uh, no, field, Huntington Bank Field. That would be a good place, Micah, to go not talk it, but to go show it. Because the world now is pretty pretty focused in on Miles versus Micah, as it should be. And finally, item five. A lot of speculation about a secret plan that Jerry has regarding Dak. They're going to announce this on Thursday, on Thursday night, before the big Ravens-Chiefs game. No, no, wait. They're going to announce it on Sunday morning to steal all the thunder from all the... No, wait a minute. They're going to do it on Friday because that way they can put it to Packers and Eagles all in one announcement. I'm not saying... And I... Listen, no, nobody's, nobody's covered more Jerry Jones than I have for 35 years. I'm not saying that... Jerry Jones isn't marketing-minded enough to have that in his head. 
I'm the guy that coined the phrase. Sometimes the Dallas Cowboys seem like a marketing company that plays football on the side. I'm saying you can't prioritize that as a real plan without cooperation from the other guy. Jerry Jones can't, in other words, plan it'll just be saying to himself, I, I, I think I'll announce it on Thursday. <laughs> Unless, you know, the other guy agrees to announce it with you. You know what I mean? Fish, out.